Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Science on Tap Cincinnati, brought to you by Community of Reason. Uh, thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, hopefully you uh, avoided the raindrops. I think there was some, uh, some nasty weather in some parts of town, so thank you for uh, coming on out. Uh, Want a quick thank you to, first and foremost, Urban Artifact for being here, and hopefully you're enjoying uh, some urban artifact beverage. Uh, we're dipping into the watermelon beverage, uh, maybe a little too much tonight already. Uh, and also a thank you to Radio Artifact, who's providing all our AV uh, this evening. We are live streaming as well as recording uh, this presentation and our others. Uh, you can find uh, this presentation and lots of excellent uh, independent music recordings uh, on uh, their uh, channels there at Radio Artifact on YouTube and at Twitch. So uh, this evening our speaker is Bob Genheimer. Uh, Bob is the George Rivashal Curator of Archaeology at the Cincinnati Museum Center. Uh, Bob has been involved in numerous um, uh, digs uh, in this area and other parts of the country, spent a lot of time uh, dealing with uh, uh, indigenous sites uh, here in the area, uh, with uh, uh, woodland, uh, woodland indigenous peoples, Ford ancient peoples, etc. Uh, and uh, you can follow Bob on Facebook. Uh, Bob has, uh, has now 217th episode, I believe, uh, of maybe 6,000 episodes uh, of Bob uh, highlighting uh, the vast collection of ethnographic uh, materials uh, that are housed at the Cincinnati Art Museum. Uh, they have wonderful, wonderful artifacts uh, from all over the globe, from Polynesia to Papua New Guinea to South America to our own uh, Southwest. Um, some really, really uh, wonderful stuff that normally uh, don't get displayed at the Museum Center, so uh, check that out. Uh, but tonight's uh, presentation um, uh, puts us uh, right back into Cincinnati, and uh, the topic is the policeman and the privy. 
and uh, it'll talk all about uh, the wonderful digs through uh, a 19th century uh, toilet. <laughs> so without any further ado, please welcome Bob Genheimer to the stage. Thanks, Bob. Um, as long as we're, this is a science group, so there may not be a lot of science in this tonight, but let me ask a question. So I'm the George Revisal Curator of Archaeology. Who knows who George Revisal is? Yeah. Exactly. So George invented Benadryl. Um, he was a medic in World War II, uh, and when he came back to um, University of Cincinnati Med School, he and a partner found an antihistamine that was like 500 times more powerful than one they ever saw. He asked his partner if he was interested in pursuing this, and his partner said no. Mistake number one. Uh, he asked the university. The university was not interested. Uh, so he became the vice president of Park Davis in Detroit and owned the patent on Benadryl for 17 years and pretty much uh, was a philanthropist and spent most of his adult life giving away his money to great causes. He was interested in archaeology. He used to send me clippings. I don't know. Any of you guys ever remember people who send you clippings in the mail? <laughs> so he, you would get this manila envelope, and he, every, he was a voracious reader, and he would pull out these clippings archaeology all over the world, and he would send them to me. And I would read them, and it was terrific. And when I went to his funeral, when he died, I thought I was special until everyone got up and spoke about, they all got clippings, <laughs> every last one of them. You know, all of a sudden I felt small, but uh, he was an, a terrific guy, and so he endowed my position at the museum. And museums like to have physicians endowed because it takes it off the book so we can do other things. So. Uh, Tonight, I'm going to talk about something um, which fascinates me. I have an obsession with this story, and that's what it is. It's a story, but I will tell you right now, this story is 100% true. Um, but the nice thing about museums is we can take data uh, from science, from archaeology, from other things, and we can make stories out of them because that's what people want to hear. Uh, there's a lot of serendipity in this story. We never expected to find this, uh, what I'm going to show you about, and it took 30 or 40 years before we could answer most of the questions because back then there weren't any, nothing was indexed. If you wanted to find out something, you had to, you know, get in your car or get in a plane and go to a library or something to find these things. Now you can just pull your phone out of your pocket and find the answers, like the Cincinnati Enquirer's index. If you look up somebody's name, you can find them. So a lot of the information came in the last 10 years when we could finally do that and it answered a lot of our questions. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with this. So again, how did this come about? So uh, it was 42 years ago, uh, December of 1980, uh, the city of Cincinnati was doing a redevelopment project uh, in uh, downtown Cincinnati in the Queensgate area, so just near City Hall, uh, and they were going to renovate a bunch of buildings. Uh, it became apparent when we went down there, the city asked us, look, that there were a lot of people digging outhouse shafts or privy shafts looking for artifacts. And they probably dug a few dozen of them. And they'd be just mounds of back dirt, you can see. And we actually went through the back dirt, which is a lot of cool stuff. So we convinced the city to pay us to look at three lots. Uh, the lot we're going to look at tonight is 427 Chestnut, if you want to go there. It's still standing today. It's been renovated. Uh, they probably don't know we dug the outhouse behind the house, but it's, it's there. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to talk about. Um, so again, three lots. But let's just go specific on this one. So I know you're asking, and I know my parents did, why do you dig privies? They were like, you know, um, this is what you went to college for all these years, to dig outhouse shafts. And um, the answer is, yeah, this, they're extremely cool. And I've listed some reasons up here. Um, let's see if I can take this off. 
uh, so I can turn around here. So again, right up the top, integrity, which is what archaeologists want to see. They don't want things to be disturbed. These shafts go deep into the ground. Uh, so they have the same integrity that they had when they were filled. Um, it's the non-fecal disposal we're really interested in. We're interested in the stuff that was thrown in there. Although, there is a hell of a lot that one can learn from looking at the fecal deposits. And if you've ever seen this stuff, it's re referred to as night soil. And, and in Cincinnati, because we're on an outwash basin, um, you have sand and gravel at the bottom of these. They're dynamic. Liquid goes through, solids stay where they are. Um, so these are really pretty cool features. They're dry, so that fecal material is like mulch. And you can tell you're in it if you take a little bit of it and decant it in water, all these seeds float to the top. So blackberry, raspberry, all this sort of stuff that you would find in fecal material, it goes right to the top. You know that you're in it. It's referred to as night soil, and, and the reason it was called night soil is because it was only legal to move it around the city at night. So there were people who cleaned out privy shafts. Uh, and then they would put it in a horse and wagon in the middle of the night, take it down to the Ohio River and dump it, which was, of course, where the city's water supply was coming from as well. So if you wonder why we had all these cholera epidemics and typhoid and all this other stuff, yeah, it, plus these things were draining into the aquifer below the city. Um, stratification, and you'll hear archaeologists talk about stratification a lot. Um, that's when things are in layers, so older stuff below, newer stuff above. We absolutely love that because that means, you know, we can, we, it's called uh, relative dating. There's no absolute dating. We know that something's older than something else, and unless something has changed that. And the preservation, uh, preservation can vary. So in Cincinnati, because these are dynamic features and it's wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry, the preservation is not as good. Uh, because if things change all the time, uh, things tend to deteriorate. Now, we dug privy shafts across the river in Covington, Kentucky, which is on a clay basin, and they stay wet. And the preservation is incredible in those. Absolutely incredible. Uh, but there's some issues in here. Most of the preservation problems here have to do with things like cloth, which you'll see in a second, and metals. Metals just tend to deteriorate and corrode uh, in this constantly changing environment. Um, and then the association. So I started out life as an archaeologist working on uh, Native American stuff. Uh, you can't make associations with a single individual or a family. You don't know their names. There's no witnesses to talk to. With the historical archaeology, and in this case urban archaeology, all this stuff is written down. There are, there are directories, there's census lists, there's deeds, there's all this sort of stuff. You can actually identify who people are, and that's what we're going to do in a second here. We're going to know who this person is. And there are terrific storehouses of knowledge from health to wealth, all sorts of things uh, in between. Uh, you're going to see an image here in a, in a, of some schnapps bottles that were standing in the privy right where they plopped down. And it's all dry now, but uh, there was 40-something of those bottles. So it was considered medicinal, but I suspect, <laughs> you know, that uh, this guy told his wife that, you know, he was, you know, he, he has medical problems, he's going to do it. And he was in the outhouse drinking the schnapps, which has a high alcohol content, a seriously high alcohol content. So, you know, we see all sorts of issues, we see things like that as well. Uh, and then aberrant behavior, which is the last thing here, and that's what this talk is going to focus on. You know, behavior that is wrong in any century. You know, and we see this stuff all the time when we look in these privy shafts. And what does the word privy mean? It's from Latin privatus, um, which means secret, private, personal. It's where the unspeakable occurs which is why it's cool to get in there and find out why, what these unspeakable things are. 